So I found this video online. Uh, I believe they're called Snow Snow. Shout out to you guys that were watching this, by the way. They are awesome. And uh, this one particular topic they were talking about involves Star Wars and uh, the top ten characters they feel they felt should have their own film. Now, uh, granted, I don't agree with some of them, especially the Chopper the Hut crap. What are you thinking, man? You see, if he's a villain, but no, no. But we go into my thoughts on that. Which character should have their own film spin-off? Because Disney's talking about doing spin-offs every other year, in between like seven, eight, and nine. So I'm going to start off with uh, Han Solo. Now, whether or not it's Harrison Ford doesn't really matter to me right now. Because I don't even know if he's confirmed to come back. I'm sure he is, but they're all getting up there, man. Man, you can't do this stuff forever, so. I mean, if they're going to do a spin off, then or obviously you're going to have to go with the younger cast. And were, I mean, they missed their opportunity to do like stuff like Dark Empire and stuff. Which you have right here, actually. I already missed the opportunity to do this one. I mean, if they'd done this like a couple years ago, when they were still mildly young, you might actually have a story. So they're going to have to make stuff crap up, and uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> and Alan's whole spinoff could uh, go into how he met Chewie and Lando and stuff. So that would be great, I think. And we see where we how he actually gets the Falcon cut in episode 5, or the Empire Strikes Back. They allude to uh, how he lost, or how Lando lost the Falcon to Han. Because Lando was one of the original owners of the Falcon, but he lost the Falcon in the card game. As long as the smoke and all that stuff, you know. So, it'll be interesting to see that kind of dynamic, I think. Number two, Boba Fett. Yeah, Boba Fett, that I could see a movie like about him having a lot of possibilities. Because, one, he's not a Jedi, and he's still mildly popular. Despite the fact that he got killed off and turned a Jedi. In the books, he's alive because somebody got out. He's even in this, uh, this comic right here. And Hans will even mention the Solid Pit, like, it seemed that the uh, Solid Pit found me indigestible, so something like that. And I just came out of nowhere, it's like, wow, <laughs> this guy's alive. <laughs> you think a blind Hans will took him down. So, all of that, if they want to go, they can actually just tell his whole story if they wanted to. I mean, I'd pay to see it. It'd be kind of refreshing to see someone else other than the freaking Skywalkers again. <laughs> I mean, jeez. There's tons of people in the Star Wars universe. Oh my gosh. They could spend the whole video talking about that. But. <laughs> this is too much to say. The video would be like three minutes long if I did that. <laughs> Number three, you have Darth Revan. We first see him in the Night of the Lord of Holy Radio game, which of course I own. But God, I start with saying what I'd be if I didn't own that game. Unfortunately, I haven't played the older public yet, but dang it, I, don't, I do not have a Windows computer. So, perhaps someday, perhaps not. Either way, I don't care. Because I'm good with what I have. But it would be really cool because you get to see formation of the Republic in its prime. And before the Empire, this is when the Sith and the Jedi were constantly at war with each other. And of course all the restlessness in the Senate and all the other stuff. And uh, Revan was one of the key components of the Jedi Civil War, he and Malik. Of course you play the game you know that already, but if you don't basic summary, Malik and, and Revan turn to the dark side, and actually, they met the Sith Emperor on some kind of planet during the war. They disobeyed orders from the Jedi Council, honestly, it wasn't the same thing, the Council's for idiots, doesn't matter what, what era we're talking about. 
So I just obeyed orders and I found the synth emperor in like unknown space. And, uh, no one knows what really happened, but what I know is that when they returned, they were on the dark side. And uh, years later, Malak turned on his master and leaves him for dead, Bachelor. And I agree with Jedi, find him, to erase his memories, and train him as a Jedi. For time, his memories return, and at that point, you gotta choose whether or not you wanna be Sith or Jedi. I chose Jedi. I think in the canon, he is, he is remembered as a hero, the Republic. But something happens, he still has his stuff in his mind, and he goes. He goes in the Evan Hawk into unknown space, and that's the last time anyone heard of him. But there are rumors I heard that Reverend is alive. He's out there somewhere. Somewhere in space now. I don't know. For a while, I thought that I was playing as him in the Old Republic 2. But it turns out just another, just a random Jedi. The last of the Jedi, apparently. And he even has a cool, it's a cool story. I think it was really cool, fresh to see on the screen. Those of you that don't know, I just gave you the basic summary of the whole story right there, so. And uh, he even has a love interest. This is probably where the whole forbidden love started with the Jedi. His love interest is Bastila Sean, and uh, they have a kid together. I believe it's a daughter, and uh, their daughter has a daughter, and that daughter appears in the Old Republic, Satio Shan. And she's unbelievably powerful. She's like Basil and Reverend combined. She's a Jedi freaking master now, and uh, she's pretty powerful. I saw those trailers, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Some of those trailers are better than all the movies combined. That's how awesome they are. Number four, I have Open One Kenobi. Ben Kenobi, as he's known in exile. Kenobi, well, I don't see how it'll be done after episode 3 and whatnot, because, or they could do a part of one Kenobi, but Luke McGregor's a little older right now, so he's older, but it's not possibly open, they can't do it. It could look at younger cast member, of course, but me personally, I'd rather right, see that on TV than in a movie. Some of these prequels are better stories for. TV than actual, you know, big budget films, which is what Star Wars is. You can always tell the story of him in, in his exile. There's quite a few stories that uh, adventures that he was on during his exile. He goes to look for his exile Jedi named Ferris Olin in one of the old books that I used to read with Anakin at the Padawan. Anakin and Ferris were rivals. And uh, Ferris even since back then that there was something off about Anakin. He warned Kenobi. He warned Kenobi about his future. They don't they even mention that in movies, so in this since not even canon. So. Ferris was not in the temple during Order sixty six, so he was still he's still out there. I think he still had his saber, but he severed his connection to uh the council and whatnot, he left order years, years ahead of time. So I'm guessing no one was even looking for him. He probably was able to mask his presence in force, which is something that are actually able to do. For example, Yoda on Dagobah, he went there because of the dark side aura and the strong dark side presence on the planet, which is why no one would have ever been able to find him there. <laughs> no one. Not even said he is or Vader. And of course, Kong was looking over Luke on Tatooine, but that's the Meyer technique. Of course, alluded to that in the original film, New Hope. But he didn't want any details, but you can already see they actually know each other, so. They could probably do that in a Rebel show if they want. Like maybe towards the end of the series, have Kenobi meet Luke, young Luke, or something. Just allude to that whole thing in that scene, A New Hope. But other than that, they can't use Luke in the show, so. Me personally, I would have preferred him to do something after 
the original trilogy. But he has more freedom in that department because he can't lose, use Luke, and he's the main guy. So, I'm like, what the hell? Number five, I have Starkiller, aka Gallon Merrick, aka Starkiller from the Fortune Release game. Notice how, notice how I said game and not games, because the second one sucked. Big time. Other than the first level, the rest of the game is a piece of crap. It's good to play, but the story is horrible. Gallon Merrick is the secret apprentice of Darth Vader. And that storyline takes place between episode three and four, roughly. Three, four years or so afterwards or so. They hunch down this Jedi on Kashik being protected by the Wookiees and he runs to this kid, strong with the force. And trains him to become an apprentice. And this whole story is basically about redemption. He meets and falls in love with this pilot called Juno Eclipse. And his ally is a, a former Jedi general named Kota. I heard he's going to be that new Star Wars Rebel show. I'll get my thoughts on that show in another video. And, uh, yeah, the story's about redemption and, uh, his sacrifice basically inspires the rebellion to be born. And I think that's a pretty big thing. I would love, love, love to see that on the big screen. But I'll take TV too. Because they can always get Sam Whitford to come and be the actual character because the character in the game is based off of him. He is Starkiller. I mean, I love Star Wars as much as I do about as much as anyone does, I'm sure. So, I mean, the only good James Ward Jones is Vader. I'm down for it, man. <laughs> and, uh, on a side note, I got written down some stories I think should have been adopted to film or should be. One, Dark Empire. One and two. Luke, basically, basic story. Luke has an encounter with the Emperor who cloned himself. This is before he died, actually. He was experimenting on himself for years, a number of years. And, uh, Luke falls to the dark side briefly, very briefly, to learn and master the dark side, which makes him even more powerful than, than any other guy, because you know, remember how Anakin fell, which is basically happened on this freaking day. <laughs> Luke is way more powerful than his father ever was. And this comic pretty much shows that, even before his uh, descent. Reef percent, and uh, Leia even has a, sm a bigger role in this one than she does in any of the movies, which is why I'm a little conflicted about why they're bringing her back for her new movies. Why she didn't do anything except the uh, slave outfit, and uh, I do say so myself. She fits out pretty well, <laughs> or she did 30 years ago. It's apparently more enough like that in this one. <laughs> Luke falls, Leia's pregnant with the twins at this point in time. They team up to fight the Emperor. Emperor manages to uh, transfer his life force into another one of his many clones. And uh, for a while, they actually beat Luke. But Luke and Leia team up and defeat him using the force and Yoda's teachings. And that's the end of the first one. I I haven't read the second one yet, but yeah, that's one of my favorite storylines. And unfortunately, they waited too long to do this whole Disney buying Lucasfilm stuff, so they wasted up, they missed the opportunity to adapt that on the big screen. That would have been really cool because it takes place right after Return of the Jedi, mainly a couple years or so, or if it's episode 7, I'm guessing it's going to be like 10 years in the future or something, because they waited so damn long to do this. Next one on my list, on number two, is the Emerald Thorn Trilogy. Now, I know the basic story, I just can't remember right now. I know Luke has some kind of conflict with her Jade, 
who kills his wife in the books, but I can't use Marjorie because from this point in history she's dead. <laughs> Jason Silva kills her. And then Jaina kills him and so on and so forth. But Avatar is a part of a trilogy and uh, I actually have yet to read the whole thing, but I think it has potential. They go with a death on TV if they can't do it in the movie. The Clone Wars animated series is proof that anything can be done with this technology these days. Number three, I have the Expanded Universe, Fate of the Jedi series. In the first book, simply titled Outcast, starts off with this Jedi going rogue because of some kind of sickness that's revealed later that actually led to Jason Solo's descent in the dark side. And uh, Luke is blamed for all this stuff because he's the Jedi Grand Master and the leader of the Jedi Council and all that stuff. So he's charged with finding out what led to all this craziness. And so he's exiled from Coruscant for 10 years. His son goes with him, then Skywalker. His son goes with him, they're exiled for 10 years to find out what happened to. Jason, what happened with his descent and all that stuff. So that's interesting. Although, not seeing Luke for that much time is one of the reasons why maybe it shouldn't be adapted. But there's a book series before that, even before that, so you always do that. That's just an idea, I guess. <laughs> Number four, Knights of the Old Republic. Anything in that era? We'll obviously adapt on the big screen or TV, doesn't matter to me. Just because <clears throat> it will be refreshing to see something, a story based on someone other than Luke or Leia or Han Solo. Someone besides those three. I mean, it would be nice to see. An era where Sith and Jedi are constantly at conflict with each other and constantly at war. A simpler time, I guess, or not very really simpler, but a different time in history that's never really been explored before on the big screen. So honestly, when you think about it, it's a little repetitive. Luke, Leon, Anakin, Kenobi, you know. I just want to make have the Clone Wars. Cause it wasn't about the clones, it was always about Skywalker or Kenobi. You all know what happens to them, so what's the point of having all these sub storylines when there's so many of them out there that they can even, could have touched upon? Now it's a wasted opportunity in my eyes, but I look forward to seeing what we're going to do with this Rebel show. They got some kind of a villain lined up already called the Inquisitor. Don't know much about him, but apparently he's going to take on the whole star killer role. Although, how I doubt his story is going to be about redemption, like Gallo Merrick was. Either way, I'm looking forward to that, and uh, that's those are my thoughts on which characters should have their own stories and which stories should be adapted to the big screen at some point in the future. <clears throat> now, let me know what your thoughts are on this video. Who do you think you should, should be, who do you think should be in have his own, his or her own solo film? What are your thoughts of episode 7? Let me know in the comments below.